flow for a long dark tone. I had no sense of fading away or coming back. I had no voices calling to me or anything like that. Simultaneous with my last recollection of seeing the bridge, the rain, a light enveloped me with a brilliance beyond earthly comprehension or description. In my next moment of awareness, I was standing in heaven. It was perfect. And I knew right then I would have no needs and never would again. I didn't even think of Earth or of those left behind. Though I did not see Jesus face to face, I did sense his presence at every turn. And I did see people I'd known as they surged towards me. I knew instantly that all of them had died during my lifetime. Their presence seemed absolutely natural. It was as if God had removed anything negative or worrisome from my consciousness. And I could only rejoice at being together with these wonderful people. Donna, I'm so excited you're here to join us. I saw Papa, you know, my grandfather that everyone called Joe. I heard his voice and felt his embrace. I'd been with him when he suffered a heart attack at home and had ridden with him in the ambulance. I'd been standing just outside the emergency room at the hospital when the doctor walked out and faced me. The doctor shook his head and said softly, We did everything we could. As I walked among them, I became aware of the wide variety of ages, old and young, and every age in between. Many of them had known each other on earth, but each had influenced my life in some way. Even though they hadn't met on earth, they seemed to know each other now. One person in the greeting committee was Mike Wood, my childhood friend. He was a popular kid and became a hero to me because he lived the Christian lifestyle and often talked about it. After high school, Mike received a full scholarship to Louisiana State University. When he was 19, Mike was killed in a car wreck. When I attended his funeral, I wondered if I would ever stop crying. I couldn't understand why God had taken such a dedicated disciple. Through the years since then, I've never been able to forget that pain and sense of loss. Then I saw Barry Wilson, who had been a classmate in high school but later drowned in a lake. Every smile radiated a happiness I didn't know was possible. And I'd saw my great-grandmother, Hattie Mann. As a child, I knew her only after she developed osteoporosis. Her head and her shoulders were always bent forward, giving her a, a sort of humped appearance. But the beautiful thing is, she didn't carry these burdens in heaven. Heaven was many things, but Without a doubt, it was the greatest family reunion of all. A holy awe came over me as I stepped forward. I had no idea what lay ahead, but I sensed that with each step I took, it would grow more wondrous. And I heard the music. I can only describe it as a holy swoosh of wings. I'd have to magnify that thousands of times to explain the effect of the sound in heaven. It was the most beautiful, pleasant sound I'd ever heard. I saw a bright iridescence. I peered through the gate, yearning to see what lay beyond. It wasn't an anxious yearning, but a peaceful openness to experience all of the grace and joy of heaven. At that very moment, I was about to realize the yearning every human heart who is in heaven and ready to go through the pearlescent gates. Then, just as suddenly as I'd arrived at the gates of heaven, I left them. I spent a long time in the hospital trying to make sense of all of this. I 
was paralyzed by the notion of my brother to return. I come back to this much pain. I think now I know. 